Canadian Press is a news agency that started 60-odd oh, years ago. And our job is to collect news from around the world, working with other agencies and within Canada from our member newspapers. We have several hundred journalists, and they use a number of means to, to provide that news into our central storage and retrieval system, from teletypes to portable terminals to video display terminals hooked to local computers. That information is then fed over a communications network into our storage system in Toronto. The information is then processed, edited, rewritten by our regional and national news editors, and then redistributed across the country to suit the particular requirements of the daily newspapers. Before we introduced computers into the news agency operation, we kept paper copies of all the news that moved on the wires, and we stored them in file boxes down in the basement. Everything was categorized, but if someone wanted to find an old story, the journalist had to go down and get the paper winder and start rolling through all the news copies. And to go through any substantial amount of background, it would take hours, if not days or weeks. Now that the information is stored electronically, by putting in the appropriate keywords, the journalist can get, in a matter of seconds, access to all the news items that contain those particular keywords that have been passed through Canadian press since 1974. A database is nothing more or less than a collection of words, information, numbers in a form whereby a computer is able to retrieve, using various methodologies, the information that's contained. In most databases, say uh, an example would be a, a database used in a business or a private individual's personal database where you were sorting names, addresses, and phone numbers. You would put that information in, into certain categories. So let's say if you had uh, the names of all the people who get Christmas cards, you would put the names in a certain field, then you would put the addresses in another field. You obviously then couldn't look for number 200 Young Street in the field that was called names because they wouldn't be in the same place. So that's on a simpler level how a lot of databases are built. The second level up from that is a keyword search database where with human intervention someone sits down, takes the information, and sorts through it and says, here are three or six or a dozen words that are key indexes. So a story, let's say, on acid rain in southern Ontario, you would index under the word acid rain Ontario southern. Any search on the word acid and rain would find that story. What QL systems uses, and therefore news text, is natural language search. What the system does is it takes the full output of our newswire, which is about a quarter of a million words a day. And it indexes absolutely every single word. So, for example, along comes the word acid. It takes the word acid and it says, have I ever seen the word acid before? And it looks up its little index where it has the word acid stored. A dictionary. We call it the dictionary. And it says, oh yeah, I've seen that word 23,948 times before. Here's 23,949, and I'm going to store it over there. Then if you say you want to do a search on acid and rain, it finds all of the places that it stored acid, all of the places that it stored rain, does a sort, determines which one of those stories contains both words, and then narrows it down. To retrieve stories, I simply type in the words. Uh, let's take the example of acid, rain, and Bill Davis, the premier of Ontario. Now what I can do is look for the words that I've searched for to make sure they're in here. And they're easy to see by turning down the brightness on the screen, and there's Davis, and there's Acid Rain. To see the next page, I just hit the return key, and it goes on and shows me the next page. If I keep going, it goes to rank two, the second story. Or I can go directly to, let's say, the oldest story, which is number 24, by just typing 24 and we're now at a story for May 22nd of 1981. The system is really stupid, and the intelligence really has to be on the part of the operator. Professional database systems like this are reasonably expensive. You're paying in the range of a dollar, dollar fifty a minute. So what you want to do is sit down beforehand, decide exactly what you want and how you want to get it, and that way 
a typical search, even though you're paying at the rate of, say, $90 an hour to use that database, a typical search might only take you three to five minutes, in which case the total cost is, say, $10. Now, to retrieve that same information, let's say you had to go to the public library. Well, for a journalist or a researcher or a freelance person who, you know, needs that information, I mean, that's cab fare to the library, let alone lunch and the, you know, four to six hours of, of searching and, and all the time and effort that's involved. So we're seeing more and more that people in a wide variety uh, of areas, not just journalists, but corporate researchers, uh, people in the public relations field, the university community, are using these databases. And the real trick is understand what you want to get, get in, find it, and get out.